This is Dallin with Developer Insight, and today we're going to be going over the pattern matching chapter of the Elixir Guide. Thus far in this series, we have already used the match operator a couple times, and that is what you call the equal sign on Elixir, is the match operator. When we have used it previously, we've generally did so to assign variables. So we'll go ahead and open up the interactive Elixir in the command line to test this out. As you can see, 1 equals x is a valid expression, as the left and right hand side were equivalent. However, when both sides of the match operator are not equivalent, it throws a match error. When assigning a variable, the variable needs to be assigned on the left side of the match operator. In this example, an error is thrown since unknown is not currently a known variable, so Elixir assumes it's a function. However, the function unknown also doesn't exist. Now the match operator can also be used to destructure complex data types. In this example, we pattern matched on a tuple and were able to receive the values individually. When destructuring, both sides of the match operator need to be equivalent, meaning that if we do not provide the same number of values on either side, then an error is going to be thrown. Different types will also cause an error when doing matching. In this example, we were attempting to match a tuple on the left side to a list on the right side, so therefore an error was thrown. We are also able to match on specific values. This example will assert that the tuple starts with the atom OK. Conversely, when we match a different value, it will throw an error. Pattern matching with lists also works pretty similarly. As you can see, we successfully were able to get the values from the list uh, individually when using pattern matching. However, it also supports matching on the head and tail of the list. The behavior of list matching is similar to the head and tail functions we've talked about previously, these ones, hd and uh, tl, that we've talked about previously in that if we match against an empty list, an error is going to be thrown. The bracket, head, pipe, tail, bracket syntax that's used right there is not just used for pattern matching, but can also be used for prepending items to a list. As you can see, by using that same syntax, I've added the zero to the front of that list there. So now it reads zero, one, two, three. The match operator can be used to rebind the value variables as we've used previously. However, sometimes we are wanting to compare the values on the right and left hand side of the operator. In this case, we can use the pin operator. The pin operator can also be used inside lists and tuples. As you can see, the pin operator, you can think of it as kind of pinning the value and saying, I don't want this to change, but I want you to compare it against what the value currently is that's stored in the variable. In this example, the pinned x value is matched against a 1 and therefore succeeds. As you can see, since we've pinned the x value to a 1, and then we go ahead and match it against a 2 in that example, it's going to go ahead and cause a match error since they don't match. This allows us to do matching as opposed to destructuring or assigning variables. If a variable is mentioned more than once in a pattern, all references need to be bound to the same value. If they're not assigned the same value, an error is going to be thrown. As you can see, since we mixed up the two numbers, having 1 and 2 being matched against two x's, it's going to go ahead and throw an error because those two values need to be the same if we're going to include it twice on the left hand side. Now if you don't care about the value in a pattern, an underscore can be used instead of a variable. This will cause the value to be ignored and you can receive only the variable that you want. Trying to read from an underscore as a variable will give an error because it's a special character and it's reserved. You can't use it as one. As shown here, it's going to go ahead and throw a compiler error saying that you can't use it. Using the match operator allows us to do many comparisons. However, there are some limitations. For example, function calls are not able to be made on the left hand side of a match. But if you reverse these two, the match is going to work just fine. As you can see there, we've moved the function over to the right hand side and it works just fine. It compares against the three and it succeeds and it matches successfully. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.